Accessible text tools for people with cognitive impairments and non-native readers. Challenges and opportunities. This is joint work by Hendrik Hoyer, University of Bremen, and Elena Glassman, Harvard University. The goal of our research is to support people who struggle with reading. Statistics indicate that this group of people is large. According to the 2018 LEO study, 12.1% of people living in Germany are functionally illiterate. The UNESCO considers people to be functionally illiterate if they are unable to engage in all those activities in which literacy is necessary for the effective functioning of their group and community. In this paper, we operationalize the term accessible text tool as any socio-technical intervention that can make text more accessible. With the first research question, we explore in which scenarios accessible text tools are needed. Following the principles of universal design and design for all our vision is to develop tools that make text accessible to anybody. Since we also want to do user-centered design, the second research question examines who could benefit the most from accessible text tools. The third question provides insights into which accessible text tools are useful to which stakeholders. With the fourth question, we also examine what the interface of accessible text tools should look like. To answer these research questions, we conducted 18 semi-structured interviews with experts from the following fields, plain language, accessibility and technology, linguistics and translation, special and remedial education. Experts were recruited using snowball sampling. Since requirements for accessible text were first made mandatory by the German Equal Opportunities for People with Disabilities Act, we collaborated with the Central Office for Accessible Information Technology of the State of Bremen in Germany. The first question is, in what scenarios would accessible text tools be especially useful? We found that the most frequently mentioned scenario is public administration. Specific tasks in this scenario include finding information about an election and understanding the election programs of political parties. Other examples include official forms and websites and tax notices. The second scenario frequently mentioned by experts focuses on the medical field. Specific tasks include receiving a letter from a doctor, doctor-patient communication and general package inserts for medicines, and health insurance information. Experts also frequently commented on everyday scenarios, for example, understanding COVID-19 rules and restrictions, e.g. in newspaper. Other tasks in this context include understanding mail from an electricity provider, searching for knowledge online, and online shopping. The second research question was, who do experts think could benefit the most from accessible text tools? The largest stakeholder group is people with impairments or learning difficulties. Relevant subgroups include people with Down syndrome. Experts also refer to cognitive or intellectual disabilities. However, Participant 16 also pointed out that people with cognitive impairments may not need assistance because they have caregivers. At the same time, Participant 16 acknowledged situations where the degree and severity of impairment is not as severe and where solutions may be helpful. Experts also recognized non-native speakers as stakeholders. Participant 2 reported that non-native speakers with migration background just don't dare to communicate because they are afraid. Participant 8 pointed out the role of tourists, who for example, visit a museum and have a little experience in the foreign language they have learned. A large group of experts held a view that accessible texts are useful for everyone. Participant 7 and Participant 5 even argued that you can't have a target audience because people are all different, and the number of people who could benefit is gigantic. Based on her personal circle of friends. Participant 17 reports the large number of people without impairments who use simple language because it is quick and easy to read, and because it provides the information they want immediately on demand. Participant 7 compares the benefit of accessible text tools to low-floor buses. While these are primarily aimed at wheelchair users, they are also good for seniors. He as a young man without impairment also benefits from such buses because he can't get on easily. Next. Let us consider the third research question, which accessible text tools are useful to stakeholders? A central part of each interview was a hypothetical design exercise in which participants had to imagine a tool that can automatically translate text from everyday language into accessible text. We asked them to describe who would use the system and how it would be used. We also asked them how such a system should be implemented technically. We identified a couple proposals that relate to compressing text. 
This includes technical support via summary and prioritization of text and by reducing the reading volume. Other accessible text tools were mentioned that focused on expanding text. Lexical simplifications was mentioned as an important way to achieve this. Experts also refer to a tool that improves the structure and flow of a text. Many experts commented on explanations that can make text more understandable. In the context of accessible text tools, experts discuss the importance of the user interface and visual factors and how they affect how text is experienced. Experts also commented on the importance of the personalization of tools. They also warned that such tools could potentially be perceived as stigmatizing. Finally, several experts commented on tools that act as a quality check. Regarding the review of text, experts also commented on the importance of reviews by the target group. We combine the different accessible text tools proposed by experts into the so-called accessible text framework. This framework helps designers and research to develop accessible text tools in practice. The framework illustrates the tension between one, compressing and two, expanding text, and outlines how tools that facilitate three, experiencing and four, reviewing text can help designers and developers overcome these tensions, as highlighted by the symbol of a scale. The components of the accessible text framework need to be balanced. Our mixed method study also showed that two different interfaces are preferred. The photo-based smartphone app, especially in medical and everyday scenarios, and the browser extension, especially in the public administration scenario. These results corroborate related work such as Liebling et al., who found that 7 out of 9 immigrants use Google Translate's camera and scan feature e.g. in shopping scenarios and for scanning documents such as utility bills. We found that people with impairments and non-native German speakers also rated this interface highly. How do we know which interfaces are preferred in which scenario? We surveyed the different stakeholders. We asked stakeholders how frequently they experienced the different scenarios and whether they perceive the accessible text tools proposed by experts as helpful. Overall, we surveyed 175 respondents, 53 were people with impairments, 54 were non-native speakers, 88 did not report impairments. For the survey we selected one concrete task for each scenario mentioned by the participants. For the public administration scenario we asked survey respondents to think of the task of finding information about an election. For the medicine scenario we asked survey respondents to imagine they receive a letter from a doctor. Finally. For the everyday life scenario we ask survey respondents to think of the task of understanding COVID-19 rules. In the following you see a graph that shows whether respondents agree or disagree that accessible text tools would be helpful in a certain scenario. For now please focus on the blue, which indicates the agreement. The scenarios are frequently encountered by people with cognitive impairments, especially the public administration, and the everyday life scenario focused on COVID-19. Non-native readers are less familiar with the election scenario, likely because they often are not allowed to vote in a country, but would also benefit from support for the medicine and the everyday life scenario. In line with what we know about universal design and design for all, many others would also benefit from support in these scenarios. The survey results also all us to rank the different accessible text tools. In this presentation, I focus on the top four accessible text tools. Therefore, I made the others a little bit harder to see. Again, please focus on the blue bars, which indicate agreement and refer to the paper for more detail. The summarization of key messages is perceived as most useful by all stakeholders. Accessible text tools that provide alternatives for difficult words, tools that help reducing the length of a text and, and explanations for difficult words are also perceived as helpful. All tools are perceived as helpful by more than a fourth of stakeholders, and that many are perceived as helpful by a majority of respondents, which makes them worth exploring in practice. Based on the findings from this paper, Jonah Anderson, and I developed a smartphone app reliant for Android and iPhone. The app allows people with cognitive impairments to take photos of any text they encounter. They then get a summary of the text and explanations of complex words. We are currently exploring ways to make this even more powerful with ChatGPT. Let us know if you want to try it out or if you want to study it in practice. Finally, we are hiring multiple doctoral 
and postdoctoral positions with a focus on accessible text, disinformation, social media, and explainable AI. If you or anybody you know is interested in these topics, please email me. Thank you for your attention. I am sorry I could not join you in person.